Welcome, everybody. Tim Baghurst, 2017 Senior World Championships. You are looking in at the warm-up for the men's 35-plus singles final between Alan Hernandez from Mexico and Jay Munoz, a resident of El Paso, Texas. I'm joined by tournament director, IRF Hall of Famer, Gary Mazaroff. Gary, thanks for joining us. What are your thoughts about this match? Well, this may be a revenge match for Jay. Last year, he took second or third to uh, Alan, did he not? Second well, place. no, he came um, third, but um, I believe Jay came second last year, and Jay beat Alan for so that second place. This is arguably the strongest match of the tournament, Tim. And we're happy to be here. First streaming, or second streaming match of Saturday. I want to thank Mel West for providing all the technical expertise for this event. As Tim indicated yesterday, it's uh, really an honor to be able to have a production of this magnitude for this event. This is the 33rd year we're here in Albuquerque. Yeah, we're very excited to be here. And, and as you said, this is one of the marquee matchups. We play round robin where points are earned across games against each other. Right now, this is the final simply because Alan and Jay are four points apart for this gold medal, which means that every point matters in this final. There, there are points, one for games as well as match. So, uh, Gary, just explain how that format works here. It's happened a couple times in the 35 years where somebody who did not lose a match actually took second place. So what we want to do is maximize a win, win every game. One earns 11 points for each of the three games, plus three points for winning the games, and seven points additionally for the match, total of 49. A bad win would be 35, 36 points. A good loss would be anything over 30. So the math is that the winner, minimum number of uh, points scored would be 35. The loser, the maximum number would be 34. So if that were to happen in this match, uh, wh whoever's ahead. Allen. Could yeah. actually, yeah. So if, if Allen uh, were to lose the match, say 34, 35, he would still come out as the champ, yeah. and that would be the third time in the history where somebody who was undefeated uh, actually took second place. Yeah, well, both of these players are undefeated. Uh, Allen lost uh, one game this entire tournament, and I'll take full credit for that you, one. You, congratulations. <laughs> Put that on your resume, uh, Oh, yeah, it will be. And, and Jay has lost, I believe, three. And I also one of those, but... The, the point of this is that you would expect then Allen to be way ahead, but he's not simply because he lost to me quite badly in that game. And so he lost that differential in points. He should have a good advantage. He was very upset yesterday having lost that last game 11-3, which really put him at a huge disadvantage going into this because he could essentially be a, a situation where he could gain uh, he could gain a huge advantage, but he's not there. So it's it's all... It's all coming down to this match. 1-0, Munoz. Bruce Hallander is our scorekeeper for this match. 2-0. Tim, if, if, if Jay has any weakness, it's his nonchalance. He is, his skill set is so elevated. I mean, you can see there, it's, it's so casual it looks casual but it's it's really smooth having played him it's very deceptive he's got a very quick first step and a great reach so he he cover, covers the ground side to side very quickly the the one area where i thought he 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 struggles is if you pass down the line because it it stops him from taking that half step across to cover a, a cross court for example so it's four zero errant shot by allen on that last one Oh, unforced error number one from Jay. So it's 0-4 in game one. This will be three games regardless of the outcome of games one and two.
Big skip from Hernandez. I thought Munoz got it. So it's self-officiated, folks. They need to arrive at a consensus. And if they don't, it'll be a replay. Looks like they have. I thought Jay got that ball. 4-0. Good start for Munoz. Both players kind of pushing the ball from an upright stance. And part of that could be it's a long tournament. Players are tired. It's an early morning start and they need to get settled in. I know Allen has been struggling physically. He got hit on the leg earlier in the tournament with a racket, and and uh, he said it's it's taken him a long time to get warmed up to get moving in matches because of that. In addition, Allen has to play uh, play doubles. He played six matches of doubles. Jay is singles only. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was interesting is yesterday when I was playing Allen I, in that third game, I found a serve that he didn't like, and guess who was watching up Jay. above? And it was Jay. And <laughs> after that match, Jay said, yeah, I, I see that now. And uh, so what you're going to see is those kind of half lobs, the, the nothing, dr nothing drive serve, uh, probably no Z serves. It's just going to be the half lobs to the left and right. Case in point, to the left. Great shot. Textbook. Zero serving four. This is the 35 plus men's doubles, effectively the championship match for the 2017 World Senior Racquetball Championships. And, and a great contingent of different nationalities in this division. Absolutely. 17 countries this year, folks. In the 35s alone, we have U.S., Mexico, India, England, Chile, uh, just to name a few. And so it's, it's incredible to be playing different people from around the, the world. A bit better from Hernandez, starting to settle down. For game one, Alan Hernandez lives in Zacatecas in Mexico. Jay Munoz, El Paso. Great get, Texas. Hernandez. But smooth and smart for Munoz. Good effort again from Hernandez. Got the first one, not the second. And again, it's just all about placement, not necessarily using a lot of power, but just putting it in the right places. Straight in, straight back. No influence from the sidewall that time. Same thing from Allen. Yeah, it was a bit loose on the second shot from Munoz. Went cross court, but hit the sidewall, came back to the middle. Timmy made a good point about the speed, not necessarily pounding the ball. More importantly is being able to handle the speed from your opponent. Good serve. between these two. And Hernandez skips it. That's that's one of those psychologically damaging rallies where you don't want to lose that one because it really hurts. Jay won the rally, yet Allen was in full control. And I think, Tim, your opinion on this one. Uh, Allen had about three opportunities to take that ball off the front wall and out of the air. Elected to let the ball bounce. He'd be better served to, to return it off the fly. Especially when Jay has returned the ball off the back wall. He's still so deep. 6-3 is the score. 
Timeout on the floor. Players get two timeouts per game. International rules, folks, versus U.S. Timeouts, one minute. Now, in this tournament and in other IRF tournaments, two timeouts allowed per game. The break between the games is two minutes. We don't have officials here, so the protocol on appealing we won't uh, cover here. But go to internationalracquetball.com for the full set of rules of the game. Another big difference is in singles and doubles, once the serve is struck, the server and his or her partner in doubles may leave their respective zones as soon as the ball is struck. In the U.S., they have to wait till the ball crosses the plane of the short line. Yeah, probably a good timeout from Hernandez. A little bit winded from that long rally that he lost. Needed to regroup. Great get. And that time it's Munoz again. So, Gary, there's the advantage of taking a timeout. He obviously was winded, needed to regroup, came back in, won the side out. Let's see if he can go on a run here. And what's the unscientific percentage of recapturing the serve, Tim? 75%. How do we know that, Gary? <laughs> it's a pulse. Here he comes in. He wins two straight rallies. Four serving six. Looks like a replay there. Was unsighted going cross court. Remember folks, self-officiated protocol is let's agree. It, when we don't agree, we'll replay the point. Yeah, Allen doesn't seem to be hitting it as hard as he was earlier this week. It's, it seems to be a much slower pace today. I don't know if that's deliberate. You saw his drive serve there. He really didn't put too much power in it. Seems to be pushing the ball rather than taking a full swing. Even there you saw. But if it's going to get skips like that, yeah. he'll just keep doing it. That's the lethargy from Jay. Just nonchalant, hit the ball off his back foot, and snapped a skip into the floor. And I did speak to him about that earlier this week, you know, because he, he did lose a couple games that he probably shouldn't have. He's, he lost two of them, one to me, uh, you know, 11-10, mm -hmm. and had opportunities to win 3-0 and didn't. And he just said, you know, he, gets, he just gets sloppy. He loses concentration. And so we'll see if, if that's going to take an effect here. That's a couple of skips in a row, and suddenly Allen is back in this. And huge momentum swing from that timeout. Sure, sure. My math is correct with a standard deviation of plus or minus two. Allen is now playing his 12th match of the tournament. At least, yeah. And Jay is, has played half of that. Right. And it takes its toll. Uh, Allen is my doubles partner, and we have a final this afternoon against the Indian pair of Mohan and Mehta. And look forward to that one. But again, that's going to that's gonna be a problem when we play the doubles. He's going to be a little more tired because of this final. And when and people come to this event, you know, it's, oh, two events, that's fine. But it's not single elimination. You're playing two, three, sometimes four matches a day just in two divisions. And uh, we have uh, maybe 10 people in the, of the 200 players or so that are playing three events. And we salute them. <laughs> <laughs> Having experienced it, I salute them. I did it once, and, and once was enough for me. Well, he's really thrown in some sloppy play. Looks like we've got a timeout. That's three or four skips since Hernandez's timeout. He leads 7-6, so let's see what Jay can come up with here. He needs a little break. Needs to just... Play clean and play smart. Okay, folks, while we're breaking, 
to talk about this event. This is one of the International Racquetball Federation uh, World Championships, World Senior Racquetball Championships, which began as the North American 40 plus in 1985. In 1989, it had begun, uh, become an IRF sanctioned event and became the World Senior Racquetball Championships. Uh, when this city had in excess of 90 indoor four wall courts, we still held the tournament in three clubs. And we had, uh, 1991, we had 403 participants, including 104 women. Wow. Now, the, number, the infrastructure's changed dramatically. We're still using three clubs, but we don't have the 12, 14, 16, and 18 club facilities. This is the host main club, Midtown Sports and Wellness. We have six. The university has six. And uh, the sister club, Downtown, has three. And we attracted over 200 uh, people to register for the event. And you just saw there Hernandez just kind of leaned into that shot, didn't move his feet at all. And there's just a sign of that fatigue of I don't really want to run for this. And a sign of the 75%. Eight serving six. Better for Minos, gets a setup, goes down the middle. So much sidewall. That was a bit sloppy. That, exactly. For those that know the game, body language is huge here. These guys don't look like the top tier players that they are. No, it's it's. I mean, to, to be blunt, I wish I was playing them today instead of earlier this week. Uh, but that's what it does. It, it's a mental and physical call in a tournament like this. For those that don't know New Mexico, um, we're at altitude. This is a mile high. Uh, some places in the state could be eight, 9,000 feet. Certainly not... Uh, Bolivia, but uh, the altitude takes its toll. It does, physically, if you're not prepared for it. But also, uh, we use the, the green pen ball, which travels very quickly. Combine that with the altitude, and we see a lot of balls coming off the back wall, uh, especially ceiling. And so sometimes we see that around the world a little bit more to try and take some of that pace off the ball. So, Tim, you're an instructor. Uh, somebody coming up wants some technical advice. I'm confident we wouldn't uh, have them emulate Allen. However, Allen's such a fine athlete and he's such a quality racquetball player, we're not gonna change his style right now, are we? Absolutely not. And I was actually speaking to a player this morning. He's got a final later today and he was talking about how yesterday he was focusing on uh, his technique because of a knee injury and things. And, and my suggestion was, you know, when you're playing in a competition, you do not want to be focusing on your technique and thinking about that while you're playing. You need to be focusing on just hitting the shot rather than trying to concentrate on a portion of the shot. Because if you focus too much on a portion, then other parts of the shot don't work in tandem with each other. There's a good shot from Hernandez. And really, you just need to play. After the tournament, get on the court and work on that technique. But during a, a, a tournament, you don't want to be trying to make those changes mid-game because that can really change the, the momentum, the, how you feel. It makes you frustrated when you're not doing it the way you want to do it. It creates problems. Okay, we have another timeout. So Alan's used his allotment for this game. Jay has one remaining. Let's see if he likes to use it. And you can see there Hernandez talking to his uh, amigo uh, Zezati from they're both from Zacatecas in Mexico. Zati was attended last year and I believe won a, a bronze medal in the men's doubles. And I believe he's getting another bronze in the doubles this I year. so. We had an opportunity to play him. Quality player, nice guy. So, let's see if Munoz can come back. Calls a timeout. See if he can get a side out. 
11 point game. Hernandez two points from game one, which you, would earn him a total of 14 points, 11 plus the three for winning. And you mentioned the, the whole, you know, they're not playing up to their potential. A serve there, Hernandez. Different twist, first time he came right side mm -hmm. and he drove the ball. Mm -hmm. the, the, the issue that we haven't discussed is this is a final and players still get nervous. And there could be a bit of tightness in the body, a little bit of nerves. Oh, great pickup, Munoz. There it Not is, that Tim. Time. Remember I said earlier, take the ball out of the air. And he elected to do it, and it's a right corner rollout. Game one, Alan Hernandez from Mexico, 11-7 over Jay Munoz from the USA. And that was huge for him. He had a four-point lead. He's extended it now to um, 11 points. And so really, there's, there's no choice. Jay has to win this second game. If he doesn't, there's no point in a third game because the point differential is, is too big. Correct. So while we're in this timeout, uh, Gary, one of, the, one of the things that I love about this tournament and, and why I keep coming back year after year is, is just the, the camaraderie and, and just seeing old friends every year, also having great competition and being able to play all week. But for those who've never been to this tournament, you know, give us a description of, of kind of how it works, uh, who's eligible, um, what, what the process is for, for getting in the tournament and, and being here next year. One needs to be 35 years of age for the singles. There are a handful of players, including yourself at one time, who uh, could play as a 30-year-old in doubles only. Uh, we, we merged the World Senior Doubles into this event three years ago, and now this is a true world championship, having all the components, singles for men and women, doubles for men and women, as well as mixed doubles. Uh, this tournament started, as we said earlier, in 1985. Anybody is eligible if they meet the age requirements. Uh, it's a world championship. The level of play is very, very elevated. Yet some people who are uh, more entry level elect to play for the experience. And not only the competition, but the camaraderie. Racquetball is a lifetime sport. And we have developed lifetime friendships. I tell people, uh, I'm rebonding with people that I've known for 40 years, Tim, and I hope we can do it for another 40. <laughs> <laughs> the calendar may not be in our favor, however, uh, it's a great, great uh, goal. And we had uh, the 95 men's final here yesterday that was televised locally uh, from the NBC affiliate here in Albuquerque. The, the Albuquerque Journal newspaper was here to do a story. Bill Matatan played Lake Westfall in the three games. All three went 11-10, and uh, Lake prevailed. We made history. The first time two players played each other having 95 years of age. And during both uh, the interview, one of Westfall's uh, responses to the uh, journalist who asked him the question, so what's your goal with racquetball? He says, uh, I want to be the first 100-year-old champion that's awesome yeah it was a great experience to see and uh, i got a little video as well that i'll share on our irf facebook page in the next few days so be sure to like our page international racquetball federation if you haven't and also a reminder to subscribe to our youtube channel we put all of these matches back individually on youtube so that you can watch them whenever you want to and, and we hope you appreciate the the efforts that we've made over the last couple years especially to to do things like this. This is the first year that we've been able to, to stream this event live. We appreciate Mel West over to my right for doing it and, and bringing his equipment. And, and what, a great, uh, what a great match we've got here, knowing that Jay has to win this second game. Correct. Correct. So we look forward to uh, doing this again, Tim, second week of November in Minneapolis. This will be the World Junior Championships, which is an annual event as well. And we should have 18 countries participating. Ireland has also committed to bringing uh, about 10 athletes. And hope to have Japan and Korea. 
And you can see Hernandez using this. Oh, nice. what a touch. What a touch. Little fist pump from him. Playing down the lines in that, that rally, keeping Jay moving side to side, getting across one to the other, and, and Jay looks a little tired. Yeah, the crisp, crispness in his stroke is absent right now. It's as if, as if he's going through motions and nothing more right now. Yeah, and, and I think Allen may settle down in the second game and play the way we know he can play, knowing that he won that first game and he's got an advantage. Another errant shot. Munoz went for too much, 3-0. We're going to try and confirm the score from our scorekeeper, Bruce. Apparently 2-0. Two zero. Two zero. That's the opening that it, Jay needs. Now let's see if he can cash in. Again, you saw Hernandez didn't bend his knees at all, took it standing upright. J just like that one, went yeah. for a little too much. Arm, arm motion, nothing more. Mm -hmm. Alan Hernandez, Zacatecas in Mexico, serving to Jay Munoz, El Paso in Texas. 1-2, game two in the 33rd IRF World Senior Racquetball Championship. Much cleaner that time. Jay really went for it, down the line. Hernandez able to get it, not that second time. Cross court winner. Great pickup, but it's a setup for Munoz. Much, much cleaner. That's what we've seen all week from Munoz. Very similar game styles to him. Smart shot from Hernandez. Munoz repeats. Loose. Munoz Once again, puts it down. both of them had a chance to take that ball out of the air at midcourt. Neither elected to do so. The last time Allen took it off the short hop, that he could have taken another step and taken it out of the air. Smart play from Hernandez. Went pinch. Munoz got there, but pinched it back to Hernandez. Went down the left side. Two serving three. Different twist on the reverse. High Z lob. Just confirming that he got it. It was a good shot. Suddenly he's woken up, Munoz. <laughs> he's starting to play clean and hit a little harder. Let's see he if he He takes can... a lot of naps. <laughs> and again, all of a sudden, Munoz has decided to start playing. He's Wake up 4-2. Wake up, little two. Susie. Wake up. Alan Hernandez, two serving four, game two. If he wins this game, he will have earned the men's 35 plus title. It'll be his second. He won it two years ago. A skip. Jay Munoz saying, I'll have none of that. Let's take it to a tie break. There's a good shot. That time he got it right. Two serving four still. This could be a critical point in this match. Flick of the wrist, but too low. Three serving four. Laziness, laziness and, and cost punished. It. it punished him, yeah. I mean, Jay's played 20 years, Tim. He's not going to change now. 
And he, he's, he's so talented. I mean, he can hit any shot. Uh, he, he's a lot quicker than he sometimes looks on the court. But he just sometimes just goes to sleep. And, and sometimes it's easy to kind of get him into that, you know, even playing him myself. He had a, a game point and skipped three in a row and gave me the game. And it was just, okay, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> it. And you just got to keep fighting when you play him because he will make mistakes. 4-4. Four, four. Just joining us this morning is IRF General Secretary Luke Senage. Good to see him back and playing. He's had some injuries, but he's here competing hard. So many players from around the world. 4-4, four, four, game two, Munoz. Comes the right side. Hernandez. Skips it. Got to it, Tim. But again, there's that instance where Hernandez loves his pinches, and a simple down the line instead of the pinch is probably going to get him more success. That's just a bad mistake, and he knows it. You can hear him on the court. Hope you appreciate the court mic that we have this week. It's fun sometimes listening into their conversations. Another so big skip. Let's see if uh, Allen takes a timeout. I agree. That would be a good time right now. He's, he's down 7-4. Yeah. Subtleties and nuances of the game. Beautiful for Munoz. 8-4, trying to close this out and effectively create a tie-break situation. And if it does go to a tie-break, it's important what the tie-break score is as well. Right. Oh, that's two bounces. Good shot that time. Hernandez currently as it stands Hernandez is ahead by seven points it looks like he will take that timeout he's down four eight Just a reminder for those of you following social media, like our Facebook page, please, International Racquetball Federation. Also, please do us a favor and share this feed. We're going to be here for the next few hours streaming a variety of different age groups and singles and doubles, mixed doubles. Mixed doubles is always fun to watch, Gary, and we've had some highly talented teams here. Incredible. Some, some playing multiple matches in that division and electing to play singles and men's or women's doubles as well. Credit Sandy Rios, for example, playing across three different age groups, or divisions, excuse me. Uh, as a, She had her birthday this week as a 60-year-old, so, you know, a lot of respect to that. Uh, you know, making that effort and training for an event like this so that you can stay fit and competitive throughout the event. Little contact. Replay at first serve. A good timeout from Hernandez. Guess who won the, the rally? So we're we're batting at a hundred percent right now on the timeout calls. Great serve. Thirty eight foot backhand killed by Munoz trying to close game two out has a three point lead at 8-5 it's rare that uh, Her Hernandez squares off to strike the ball get parallel to the sidewall he's open <laughs> with his strike just about 100 yeah, Even there, he had a chance to bring that left foot around, but he didn't. 
and I and I, well. I do think in many respects it's down to fatigue. He's played a lot of matches, and uh, he's as, as as my doubles partner. Trust me, yes. I know he struggled this week with fatigue, uh, but here he is. He's fighting hard. Right now he's in the he's in the lead, having won game one. Came in with a four point advantage, but he's down. Nothing less than putting himself in a position to win. That's what good players do. They grind out a win even when they're not necessarily playing at their best. And in this tournament, Tim, there is something, a concept called a good loss. So, for example, if Allen loses this game and goes into the tiebreak, if he can get 9, 10 points here, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Jay. I was speaking with one player this morning, first time from Chile, first time here, and he told me, he said, the one thing I learned is you can't, you can't lose 3-0. You can't lose 3-0. If you lose the first two, you have to win that third game because it means so much. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's really important because it adds up to that total, and we see so many times players winning and losing medals by just a couple points over five days. Beautiful forehand pinch, Hernandez. It could come down to a percentage of one, so actually 0 0.20 of 1% could be the difference between first and second, or second and third. Good shot. Yeah, Munoz uh, picking on that forehand side, and I'm not sure that's wise. Going cross court, Hernandez that time goes down the line. Goes back to the high reverse Z lob. Jay wraps it. Okay, he had an opportunity, took it out of the air. But again, he was facing the front wall, wide stance, feet apart, and just kind of slapped at it. Jay would like to have that one back. Mm -hmm. Big skip from him. Six serving nine. There's the Hernandez we know. A little fist pump from him. More recently, he's been taking those balls out of the air before they take the first bounce, and it's paying dividends. Even if he keeps the ball up, it keeps Munoz on the move and guessing. Eight serving nine. So three three points away from this title, effectively, because if he wins the first two, it's it's pretty much over. Munoz takes a timeout. Needs to compose himself. He needs a side out here. Let's see if the the timeout does work in his favor. Folks, upcoming on the IRF calendar. We have the World Juniors in Minneapolis this November. Pan American Championships, the end of March in 2018. We have the World Championships scheduled for Shanghai, China in the summer of 2018. This event will be the same week before Labor Day next year. And the South American Championships will be in May in Cochabamba in Bolivia. So quite a bit on the plate, Tim. It's going to be a busy year for international racquetball, but we wouldn't have it any other way. So here we go. I love Z. It's loose from Munoz. Oh, and Hernandez, huge skip. Timeout. Yep, four for four on those timeouts. 9-8. Skip. Eight nine. Ooh. 
I, don't you feel that that is mental rather than physical? I mean, it's just he knows he's so close. And two big skips when he had easy opportunities. And, and you just feel that he's tight right now. It's a lot at stake. So Jay went to a different serve. First time he hit the Z, jammed Hernandez, but he didn't earn the point. Wow. So Hernandez coming back third time at eight. Got a little bit lucky, Hernandez, I felt there. Hernandez has found a serve in this second game with the high Z reverse lob. There it is again. Munoz finishes it. It was beautiful. Oh, he oh skipped no, it. I skipped it. Sounded Nine good. Each. Same serve. Goes up top. And around. Oh my. Wow. Oh. Okay, we. Was that game? Okay, he closed it out, folks. <laughs> or is it a timeout? Okay. Okay, that's a resource that uh, Munoz uses. He has a timeout. He's using it. So he finds himself on the receiving end of match point number one. We talked about the scoring. They will play a third game probably. However, if Hernandez closes this game out, he will be effectively the champ. He had an 11-point lead going into the second game. He would get an extra seven points for winning. So if, it, if this resulted in 11-9... It would be a plus two differential, plus plus three for the game one, and then seven for the match one. So effectively, there would be a a 20, uh, 23 point differential, which of course can't be obtained in an 11 point third game where Correct. there's only 14 points on the table. Correct. Unless he's assessed a number of technicals. However, in international play, once the third technical is assessed, that individual loses that match. That's true. Don't usually see something like that. I don't think I've ever seen a technical at World Seniors. Uh, yes. You're more experienced than me, Gary. But in the and generally, though, we see a lot of fair play and a lot of, of quickly. It was a mixed doubles match, and uh, one team was up 2-0, the tiebreak. Uh, one of the players, the male player of the team that had won the first two games, had uh, in inappropriate eyewear, so he was assessed a technical. And they lost that game 11-0, so effectively it was 11 to minus one. Mm -hmm. Consequently, they didn't get the 35 points, they got 34. <laughs> <laughs> Strange things happen, Tim, especially if you've been around long enough. All right, so here we go. 10 serving nine, effectively match point. Let's see if Hernandez can close it out at the first asking. Percentage to say he'll get a side out. That is in Munoz's favor. So we saw a lot of lobsies to the forehand over the last few points. Let's see if he stays. He's not. He's going oh. to the drive. And that's loose. Incredible. Incredible. So we'll, we could talk about that another time. <laughs> Why? Really could. Why? If Why? it ain't broke, don't fix right. it. And sometimes a timeout. During a timeout, a player can forget why he got there or she got there or how. Look that <laughs> smooth. All of a sudden, all of a sudden we have game point Munoz. So he staved off match point number one. Now he has game point number one. And there, whoa, oh, nice good get. get. Smart play, Munoz. Gets a better look this time. Back wall. Oh, another Three great times. get. What a rally. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. There it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Underhand, front wall, deep side wall. Kiss. I have 11-10. Guess not. There it is. I'm not sure. Unless they're playing the third game here. I don't know what's going on. They, well.
We're confused. Everybody's confused. All right, folks, we have clarification. <laughs> the players finished the second game. Munoz won 11-10. They elected not to leave the court. They just continue to play. So it's 2-0 in favor of Munoz. Make that three. 3-0, Well, we're all a little confused here, but we're at 5-0. And, and really, it doesn't matter. Hernandez has effectively taken this title, winning the first two. Oh, no, excuse me. Munoz won the second. I'm, <laughs> I'm so confused. We're all confused. Everybody out here is confused, but the players know what's going on. So going into this third game, if I can do the math, uh, Hernandez was up 11 points after the first game. Munoz gained a four-point differential to make it plus seven for in favor of Hernandez. So it really comes down to how this last tiebreak comes. It's, it's really down to this last game. Who's going to win the tiebreaker? Munoz has suddenly woken up, forcing Hernandez all over, but that was a big, big skip there. But he's up 0-5. So our, our director, Gary Mazaroff, has gone up to, to actually find out what's going on. Uh, they're saying 7-0. Let me see if I can turn up the mic here. 11-9. Okay, so Hernandez won the second game 11-9. And now it's 7-0, but really it doesn't matter. So Hernandez is already the champ. I wonder if he knows that. We apologize, folks. Gross... Miscommunication. So once this game is over, oh, Hernandez great will get. be the champ. And again. But loose that time. Surely he knows it, Gary. Surely he's done the math. <laughs> Maybe no assumptions, not. my friend. No <laughs> assumptions. Yeah, why are they playing the third game? Well, it is round robin, but uh, those of us in 35 know that these two are well clear, and the point differential doesn't matter. They were already in first and second before this match started. So It's part of the presentation, my friend. There we go. We wanted some extra match. We, The crowd are enjoying this one anyway. We hope you are. There's a nice shot. Hernandez settled down, didn't go for too much. He went back to what works, Gary. That one minute can seem like a lifetime. How did I get here? Well, th that looked like a double hit. That was strange. It's a miss hit, and he rolled it. Smooth for Munoz. Too little, too late, though, Gary. Three serving nine.
Well, we hope you're enjoying this coverage. We'll let you know as soon as possible which match is coming up after this. And we hope you to continue to watch and en enjoy this live coverage of the Senior World Championships. Please do share on this link with others. Should be a great day of racquetball. Too little, too late. However, sometimes you make a long putt on 18, Tim, you come back. Shot. Beautiful, Hernandez. Huge skip, groans from the crowd. <laughs> wow. But Tim, when you play with Allen today in that final of the doubles, it may be uh, non-traditional 80-20 in your favor of striking the ball. I promise you, Gary, that's not non-traditional in our doubles <laughs> matches. <laughs> uh, Generally speaking. Uh, well, one of the things that we talked about yesterday in doubles is just good communication and partnerships. And and Alan and I uh, won it last year. We're defending our title this year, and we're in the final again. And, and it comes down to just communication and understanding what the other person can and can't do. And... A reminder that you know not always the two best players are the two are, are the best doubles team, and it requires teamwork. And we've seen a lot of miscommunication and confusion, and and don't just necessarily choose your doubles partner because they're a great singles player because it doesn't always work that way. Of course, I say that, and here we are looking at my doubles partner who is the singles champion this week, and and hopefully he's got the energy to pull it together for one more match. <laughs> this afternoon keeping him on the yo-yo screen man wow uh, <laughs> so what a great effort out. they close it out two games to one in favor of hernandez which earns him the title of the men's 35 singles in the 33rd irf world senior racquetball championships tim i'll see you in november yeah you're Masra, now, west, thank you thank you very much great production bud So there you have it, Alan Hernandez claiming the title of champion for the second time. Munoz will take silver. We will take a quick break. We'll leave the live stream on, but we'll take a quick break while we find out who's next on this court and get that up and running for you. Just a reminder, we'll be here for the next several hours. We hope you stay with us. We hope you join us and share our feed so that we can spread racquetball around the world. For now, though, Tim Baghurst, Gary Mazaroff. Mel West, thanks for joining us, and we'll be back very shortly.